Carlos, welcome onto the show, man. It's mm -hmm. an absolute pleasure. Glad to, to be have here. You. Glad to be here back in Northern Ireland. Right. We're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk about defiance, and we're going to talk a little bit about N four. Mm -hmm. But first, defiance. Yes. Which. I have, I, right, okay, so at this stage, <laughs> I know a little bit about this project. Yeah, we've spent a week making content with Carlos. Yep. And we three Metal Kings, along mm -hmm. with Carlos here, have played Defiance, okay? Mm -hmm. For me personally, uh, Defiance is one of the most significant games um, uh, well, probably in the last few years. And uh, the, reason, the reason for that is Defiance... To me, is the most accessible route into Infinity that I uh, that I could have hoped for. Um, Infinity is a massive game. Hmm. Like, do you even know how many SKUs, how many uh, how many products, products are in the Infinity range now? Uh, we're trying to reduce the SKU spectrum. I mean, yeah. it's too much. We're trying to reduce it to just have like fifty five zero for every mm -hmm. faction, but we are reaching. Or nine factions. Yeah. So ten, even I would say. So mm -hmm. it's huge. Yeah, yeah. it's huge. And, yeah. and your, your latest drop was the O12. Yeah, yeah, and that is a problem not only for us because we have a space. Okay, but yeah. imagine for retailers, for distributors, to mm -hmm. and 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 seven, and it's a constant. Now this SKU is discontinued. Now this every month Corvus Belly brings more miniatures to the range. Yeah, and the hardcore fans do not have enough. Yeah. Hardcore fans are constantly asking for the next thing or or the needs for the army mm -hmm. because having nine factions is like having nine children. Every they have needs constantly. <laughs> yes. So everybody has, uh, you know, gaps to fill, and uh, and the also giving meaning to all those SKUs to all those miniatures requires a very dense rule book, very dense yeah. set of rules mm. because people will. And, and the hardcore fans that uh, play nowadays Infinity are not beginners, okay? No. Because we have the game really after four expansions right now. Mm -hmm. That's why next year is, is the M4 moment, really a, really a good moment for... Fourth edition. Reboots yeah. in a certain mm -hmm. way. Uh, but uh, what, I, what I find when I see interviews of them is that they really like the complexity. They really yeah. like mm -hmm. the deepness of it. Mm -hmm. For a beginning, it's especially exciting, like, oh my God, there's an ocean here of stuff to, to read. Mm -hmm. and, and not only fluff, they also like, like, Infinity, still nowadays, is a game that if you get into, if you really spend one whole day reading rules, you may find something. You may find a combo that nobody noticed in, yeah. in your meta or maybe online even. Mm. You will find a, I think that I have something here. And that's why when you speak with the players, you find that this guy is an engineer, this guy is a scientist, and this guy has an incredible degree. They have brains. Yeah. So for them, it's like, okay, I'm delving into this. Why nobody is using a sniffer and a sniffer launcher? when I can really use forward observer with no line of fire here when, and then shoot the guided ammunition and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Why is this? Mm, it's difficult, maybe it's tricky, maybe no one is expecting this in the next tournament, maybe, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's why the Infinity Army uh, that you guys built is so, so useful because you can just go through your factions, yeah, find all your rules. Builder. Yeah. yeah. You, like, you, you know the story about the army? It's, it's incredible. I mean, back in the day, Jesus, uh, a guy who now is in the company, but back in the day he was an Infinity fan with the skills. Mm -hmm. He made the army yeah. for free. He yeah. wanted mm -hmm. to make it. And it was not like this one, but pretty close. Oh, yeah. I arrived to Gen Con, first time Gen Con in the United States. I find a super hardcore fan over there who was already, without even having the workhorse program, who he was already sharing and introducing into Infinity lots of people. Mm -hmm. And he told me, how much uh, did you pay for the army? Mm -hmm. And I go like this, zero. It was me for a fan. And the guy looks at the floor, laughs for a few minutes, and then tells me, you have no idea of how important the army builder is mm -hmm. for yeah. getting people inside this game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that reducing the barriers to entry, having just a resource like that that people can deep dive into, mm -hmm. especially for a game like Infinity, is so key. Yeah. And when we released N3, mm -hmm. the army was not ready yet. <laughs> For for two months or something like that, uh, people was hysterical, <laughs> hysterical. <laughs> the, the 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 most passive aggressive comments on our social media. <laughs> stuff like that. Don't, it, it don't, don't worry, you're not alone in that. Any time no. any new book gets released for any system, the <laughs> first thing is when is X, Y, and Z getting updated? Yeah. yeah. 
So, yeah, I understand what you're telling me because now we're getting into defiance and defiance works with the Aristea engine. Defiance has these dice. Okay, maybe you can say that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uses these dice. Uh, can I speak for, from you? Uh, uh, what I've seen is that mm -hmm. once I deploy all the cardboard on the cards on, the, on this table and I read your character or something mm -hmm. like that, okay, this is your attack, this is your defense. Warren was like, okay, okay. And from that moment on, you already catch uh, yeah. how it goes. Yeah. You, you you explained to him his character, you explained to Jerry his character, and I said, look, don't say anything. Yeah. I'm going to explain my character. Yeah. And, and I was able to pick it up. Yeah. So it, th this is where I'm going with this. You know, Infinity, there's no doubt about it, Infinity is a significant game, mm -hmm. okay? And there, uh, uh, there are, there's got to be people out there like myself who are huge fans of Infinity, but... We don't have the time, and in some instances, we don't have a lot of the expertise or whatever mm. to necessarily commit to the game. So, we, so we're, we're, we're fans a little bit on the outside, a little bit on the outer rim. That is what we call rebound. There is people who like the aesthetic, who like the look of it, yeah. and they rebound. Operation Ice Storm, Operation Wildfire, Red Veil, those boxes uh, allow people to get into infinity, enjoy the box, mm. and if they're fine with it, they're fine with it. That's yeah. why they're successful, because mm -hmm. you can enjoy Infinity just with that box. And then if you want, but that is like, uh, we're scuba divers right now, okay? Mm -hmm. And we like to jump on the water and, and swim and see the fish. Yeah. Okay, that's Operation Ice Storm. Mm -hmm. Getting into Infinity Tournament and Sing is like getting into the abyss, okay? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. going down, 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 and you, your oxygen bottle is not enough. You need that liquid thing from the abyss movie. <laughs> you know? it's, it's like... And that's, so for some people, it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, I like this. Yeah. Because every single battle, every single tournament is different. And you listen to the podcast after a big tournament, and everybody's like, okay, what happened? It happened this, 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 this. And it's totally different from previous experiences. Mm -hmm. That is rich. Okay, it's rich. But... Defiance if, for me. But rebounding, I mean, yeah. and, and, and making casual and friendly for people who get it immediately. In the third term, Jerry had already totally mm. been hacking the system. He yeah, has yeah, establishing yeah. priorities. He has really realizing many tactical decisions there. Mm. Yeah. That's, it, it, it's it, the fact that the game itself lends itself to that, where you have such a broad base that you can build on, um, that regardless of what the heroes are and what the forces you're fighting in there, just even going, the turn sequence is alternating hero and then enemy. But as to how you choose to manipulate that turn sequence is is up to you. So if you want your tank to go first, you can, but then that will have repercussions. Or maybe after the first turn you go, I'm going to activate, and then next turn you can activate Warren. Yeah. But then the thing that's right beside you is actually the thing that's pulled out. So they've already gone, so it's pointless activating now. Something else has become a greater threat because they still have the chance to activate later. In the, and it's just such a simple mechanic that means you can really deep dive in without being overwhelmed by a ton of additional rules. Yeah. It also yeah. lets you as players have a discussion on your tactics around the table yeah. rather than having one person quarterbacking the whole time. Well, what happens, uh, what, had, what Defiance has unlocked for me is um, I, I know, I, but having played Defiance, Carlos, right, mm. I feel that I can fully enjoy the Infinity Universe, okay? Um in a game that I can play casually with alongside my friends. You know, I can get people together. I could get, even get my family together. I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, uh, even some of my children are nearing the age easily where they where they could get to grips with defiance with a little bit of help. With, You're not with the first person who tells me this. Yeah. I mean, more people like this is family friendly even. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely it is. And th to have that, th to have that ability because it, the interest that what really struck me about defiance was it doesn't feel like infinity light no. do you know what i mean it feels it is easy it is so so easy everything you need is just sitting there in front of you i'm not delving through hundreds of pages of rule books or having and to memorize like rules yeah. yeah there's nothing to memorize there's nothing to do it's all there in front of me mm -hmm. But I never felt like I was being shortchanged yeah. on the Infinity experience. I feel like I'm exploring Infinity. And I'm so excited uh, by the e e the background that you guys have come up for Defiance. I'm not going to talk about it because we're going to keep some stuff 
mm-hmm. for you guys to to enjoy mm-hmm. in, in some some content that we have coming out. But uh, this is why, if ever there was a game out there that had the potential to unlock another huge aspect of popularity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was infinity. It needed it needed something else, something for the casual players to immerse themselves um, in the game. And Defiance, this is why, for me, this is one of the most significant games um, in the last number of years. It's because it, it has unlocked a universe mm. that, to many of us, uh, our love for it uh, could only go so far. You know, it so. comes because it's a cooperative game, mm-hmm. in my opinion. I mean, the Corvus Belli had one-on-one tournament scene games with Aristella and Infinity, you against the other guy. This one is all together against an AI, because the bad guys in this game are controlled by an AI, by artificial intelligence mm-hmm. uh, deck of cards. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, comes from that and uh, it's totally compatible with Infinity I mean when the moment comes you will realize that all the miniatures will will be playable in Infinity and it's the same quality of the Infinity figures it's yeah. metal being cast in, in our facilities so the quality will be the top quality of that we can bring and, and which is the top quality of metal miniatures in the market right now mm. Uh, it's, it's like that. I mean, uh, do you want to show some of this stuff off? Actually, <laughs> oh, just yeah, a, yeah. A, a little bit that would yeah. We there can there look is at. a a page up on the internet at the minute, so you can get a look at your your heroes and stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, while while you're showing that off, uh, mm-hmm. Carlos, um, uh, do you want to talk just a little bit? Give people a little bit of insight into what the Kickstarter is about. So it's a Kickstarter exclusive. Yeah, um, uh, that's, so the that's, Kickstarter model is what is hopefully going to enable this to, to come to life, you know, because it is a massive project. Well, it's something different from, as you know, Corvus Belli sends their products to retailers, to distributors, everything. But this one is Kickstarter and it's Kickstarter exclusive. Hmm. So it's a very limited opportunity window to get the, the all the goodies. And the wave of content that is, that is coming is huge. I mean, right now while we are speaking, the artists are still making stuff. Yeah. And images and more sculpts. Because apart from what comes in the core box or the collector box, there is a ton of stuff yet to come. And there will be many stretch goals. I mean, I really want to, to, to give a shout out to everyone over there so they focus their attention by the end of October, beginning of November, to the Kickstarter Defiance page because uh, the way it has been structured is in order to keep people looking and looking and f 5 in it yeah. uh, constantly because stuff will appear constantly, okay? Every right. 15 minutes, something will unlock, probably. Now, there is something this game also does that I think I've had a problem with with Infinity for a few years, is I feel sometimes a little bit lost in the narrative of the world. Mm-hmm. This gives me a very clean, self-contained story that I can follow and use as my first wedge into the world to begin exploring it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's not so much about armies, it's an adventure with heroes in yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's not so massive a scope. It's suddenly we are in narrow corridors and, and there's a, a, a drama, an intensity to it, a countdown happening and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the so the key the key touch points for anybody that is looking to jump in on this is uh, one Kickstarter exclusive. It's, Kickstarter it's, exclusive. It's a project that is being that, that that Kickstarter is going to enable basically because mm-hmm. it, it is an enormous project. You yeah. guys have never done a bigger box. No, than, no, no, than nothing like that. Nothing this scale. That's why. The, the sculptors began making the skulls at the beginning of the year yeah. because they have to squeeze the time for sculpting miniatures while they are sculpting the regular releases for every game. Yeah. So when we, when the whole project was like put on paper, it was like holy. I mean, yeah. we have to care about uh, being able to to make all this stuff. And I know that there is a moment during the campaign where we will cross a line where the stuff has to be made <laughs> yes. because we will promise a gazillion million of miniatures, I mean, mm-hmm. and, and, and extras and stuff. So it's going to be huge. In the, fact, depending on the level of success of this project, it, it might push further other stuff that we'll have for 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the miniatures are metal, which I have no issue with because uh, uh, two of the reasons I have no issue with that is A, I know the quality of them are going to be superb. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the heft of metal minis anyway um, but also you guys will be doing the manufacturing in house oh yeah yeah. So that's it's, um, absolutely Corvus Belli and let's say something else 
Not only the miniatures will be metal and made by Corvus Bailey, where it's going to be a ton of miniatures, and they are going 90% of them. <laughs> okay, maybe we we'll repeat uh, an, an extra additional copy of one or two of them, but every single enemy will be different. Different a skull, unique miniature. Okay, yeah, that's so that's something that I boutique. want to stress about mm -hmm. because uh, I mean it takes a lot of work from us to to make things that way. But it's what we think that how can we make this Kickstarter dungeon crawler special? Mm. Because there are many out there, many super projects. I seen super projects, incredible projects, lovely. But sometimes they get this box comes with one hundred fifty miniatures. Yeah, okay, fine. But that army is composed by the one guy and 15 several copies of the same guy, you know. Yeah. We didn't want that because... That's not infinity. And it's, a, yeah, in infinity, it nobody wants experience. to repeat that. Yeah, it's not infinity. Miniature. You know, it's, um, and, this, and defiance is part of the infinity ecosystem. Yeah, so. was just looking for having our own virtue, okay? Uh, so it's going to be very, very high quality, uh, and also every single miniature is different. It's a unique sculpt. We're going for that, okay? Yeah. Apart from that, being Kickstarter, limited opportunity window, uh, metal miniatures, cooperative experience, which something doesn't happen uh, for Corpus really now is happening, totally compatible with Infinity, which is an added value to yeah. the whole thing. We, I would love, for me, the most amazing thing is the, that many new people, newcomers, yes. get into this game. Yeah. Not necessarily having to get into Infinity, that enjoy this game. Get this box. Well, I this know game. that the existing player base is going to enjoy this. Oh, yeah. Okay? They're, going, they're going to love this. It's a new way for them to experience something they already love. But um, what, I, what I, it's the circles outside of that. And I'm in some of those circles, you know, uh, where uh, yeah, I'm not in the hardcore, but it's what it unlocks. It's the bridge for us to be able to, to say, right, that is how. I explore and enjoy the Infinity Universe. And you want to know what is most special about an experience like this, a dungeon crawling experience? And I know a thing or two about dungeon crawlers. <laughs> dungeon crawlers unleash your ability to flexibly collect. Mm. You're not just about building one army. You're about building out mm. an entire experience. Mm. So as a, a, if a dungeon crawler takes off and is well supported, it begins to potentially unlock all sorts of models that you can bring down that you think, I would love to own that. Yeah. I'd love to meet that in the dungeon or in the spaceship or in mm -hmm. the whatever it is it is that I'm playing. And suddenly, it, it, it the flexibility a game like that gives to me as someone that wants to explore a universe, mm -hmm. I don't have to say, I'm committed to Hak Islam and I need to make sure that I always get that right. For this, I'm going to dip into a bit of Pan. Oh, I can dip into a bit of Hak Islam, the Nomads, boom, 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 hmm. and start to pull all together. And oh man, for for casual players, you're in your happy place, Warren. <laughs> I'm I'm in a very happy place, and you will see how happy I am uh, whenever we whenever we come to to start putting yeah. the content out. Funny story uh, in Spain, Aristella really hit uh, very very strongly in the uh, tabletop gaming communities. So that situation of, I like this game. Oh, is this based on something bigger? Really? <laughs> and funding players who, through Aristea, find Infinity, you know? Yeah. Which is, which is the, the totally, uh, you know, we were expecting this. But in Spain, happening especially. In Spain, we sold out all the Spanish copies of Aristea. We had to ask for more for to China. So that sensation of, I like this. It's cute. Okay, okay fine. And so, like, do you know that there's a huge sci-fi universe that, that this comes from? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And then they click on the internet and it's like, oh my God, I'm lost mm -hmm. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, N4. Uh, I would imagine that um, there are rumors circulating endlessly about N4 now. <laughs> Well, um, we what? announced M4 at Gen Con. We just put M4 on the screen mm -hmm. and 2020. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and and for, for Corus really, when we announce something, it's like, oh my God, we cannot go back. No. <laughs> 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 we already say it. The community was asking already for M4 long ago. Yeah. Uh, they know when the game has uh, advanced too much in one direction. Yes. Mm -hmm. The best moment for a game is when it gain, uh, arrives brand new, new edition. Mm -hmm. uh, from a market perspective is when it really recruits people. We can look at it as, a, as this kind of trumpet, you know, 
yeah. when the moment of more people is playing the game is a new edition has just come out and after expansion after expansion after expansion you're narrowing that that uh, reach mm-hmm. that you have mm-hmm. that's why companies make new editions constantly but for Corvus Belli it's like oh wow a new edition because uh, N3 was released 2014 already yeah so 2020 and four. I mean, yeah, so six years, man. Six years. Yeah, that's six a good years. cycle for a rule system. Mm-hmm. I mean, not not you know one year one edition or two years. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. It requires a lot from us. So it's it's going to be a lot of work because uh, consider that we have like six hundred SKUs out there already, and we have now to to change the the meta, the rules, the everything mm. to fit still fit still reaching yeah. all those miniatures and giving them meaning apart from the huge wave of new miniatures that will come okay so it requires a lot and, and there's a lot of special situations when you think you have a perfect rule that adapts to for everything suddenly a new tiny miniature comes out what about me what about me mm-hmm. because if this rule now changes to this I'm totally screwed Okay, mm-hmm. what well, change my profile is, but yeah, one, that or he's standing there going, "I am not God." Mm-hmm. Well, doesn't happen with everyone. No? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to put people's minds? Don't mind you speak with your miniatures uh, daily? No, no, my my miniatures don't talk to me. Do they talk to you, Carlos? Okay, in Corvus Belli, we speak with them. Yeah. <laughs> we allow them. If you don't keep them on side, then they won't perform for you when you need them. We allow them to to stand on the table and speak to us in in big meetings. Yeah. Is N4 going to use these colored dice? No, it's there not. It's not. That's, there you go. That's the rumor I, I keep uh, Don't worry, it's, it's all going to D8 instead. You'll enjoy D8. <laughs> it's very nice. Anyway, there's the slight opportunity at, at that because the Defiance Kickstarter is going to be huge and having tons of stretch goals. There's that little opportunity that if people get crazy enough and support the game crazy enough and we reach skyrocket numbers, maybe a mode for Defiance that allows players to compete one against another using the rules from Defiance uh, the Aristea engine that might happen mm-hmm. and I would love that to happen mm-hmm. because I'm so much into beginner friendly modes and games yeah. and stuff like that yeah. see I would love to see those dice used in like a 5 mini v 5 mini sort of black ops v black ops sort of scenario could be cool well, I, now that you raise it I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot Carlos mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. um we're talking about beginner friendly modes and things like that there okay um n4 is going to be enormous it's going to be huge are you guys considering people's entry point into the n4 infinity or is there is it is it going to be like the, have you thought you about the best question that, that is directly the best question okay yeah because even before beginning the project of n4 the company, the needs of the company, the, the complexities of selling Infinity already gave us direction. Before beginning in 4, we have the fan base telling, change full auto, change suppression fire. They, they care about the rules mm. and they think about the rules as players, but the company also has its needs. Beginner friendly M4 thing. Okay, that's why this whole structure of M4 is divided in two big blocks. Mm-hmm. basic and advanced okay ah. yeah so to the rules developers they were told you have to design the this this time n3 was n3 mm-hmm. okay and n3 had the operation ice storm operation red veil which encapsulates the game in a in a box and mm-hmm. people can enjoy it like that that worked out so well that now for m4 is like no we're going to devise uh, splitting half the, the rules and the basic will be like the level of uh, game that you will enjoy in the operation box yeah so but make it not just for the box make it for the whole range of uh, miniatures for for a certain selection of miniatures yeah so that project which is the basic rules of m4 uh, got its own name is now called code one code infinity one? code one mm-hmm. uh-huh. okay and it's like the first chapter once you play it code one with not all the miniatures from Infinity, just the ones you are told that they, they will have their, their profile of code one, mm-hmm. uh, you will understand move, shoot, cover, uh, mimetism, uh, basic rules, okay? Mm-hmm. Then, at, at a different moment of the of 2020, full and four will arrive, okay? Mm-hmm. So we, were, we are really considering allowing people to play tournaments of code one, Oh, yeah, wow. just, allowing so the, allowing the, the army builder to have two buttons, mm-hmm. like code one and full and four. 
Yeah. Uh, the mathematics is going to be different even because mm -hmm. not uh, everybody in Code 1 is going to have all the weapons and all the abilities. So the cost of the troops ch change also. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, it's like baby steps. Uh, so one. even the organized, uh, right. So this is, a, it sounds like a full commitment to uh, saying, yeah, you're going to get full infinity, but we're going to give you um, a pathway to grow into it. Yeah. And even that pathway we're going to endeavor to fully support via organized play and so on. Not only that, uh, certain products will be labeled as code one products. Yeah. Because that will make things also easier for retailers and distributors. Mm -hmm. They will yeah. know what is essential and what is advanced in mm -hmm. between the SKUs, I'm telling that. Yeah. So that uh, has a huge meaning mm -hmm. because nowadays, uh, I mean, we cannot demand every retailer and store to know <laughs> deeply how to play Infinity. Yeah. They constantly come to you and say, okay, you have like 600 SKUs. What do I need? I want to start selling Infinity in my store, but this is overwhelming. Yeah. Okay, so what is the basics? Uh, and many times they give us, I have this budget, make the list for me. Yeah. And, and we in Cycle usually have to make the, the essential list adapting the budget to the guy. And we will do it because we're that crazy. But... Once we label the products, and this is code one and this is advanced, they will know what is essential yeah. mm -hmm. and making things easier. So not only for the customer, also for the middleman. Yeah. Very good. Well, like it, it, it's something about store owners. Remember that, that, that store owners, um, the, their job is not necessarily to play games. Their job is to give a really good store service. Mm -hmm. So it's um, knowing about the game is important, but they have a hundred other jobs that they have to do. So the more simple that any company can make it for them, the the better. And, and then the same for players. Space. The same for players. Yeah. But even just for we the, the, the workhorse program in mm -hmm. Corpus Belli, which is so super hardcore players that love Infinity and love Aristeia, uh, mm -hmm. can uh, make tournaments and stuff like that. But uh, they are usually very good advisors for, for stores. Mm -hmm. If there's a good yeah. relation between the store and the workhorse, the workhorse can perfectly uh, tell him because uh, something happened uh, years ago. Corpus really released the uh, Tunguska starter pack, for example, which for the fan base was like, oh my God, finally, mm -hmm. Tunguska is here. But we didn't release it as, as the Gencom product or as the Adepticon product or as the super star mm -hmm. product. It was a normal release, monthly release. But for in terms of the hardcore fan, it was, oh my God, the second coming of Jesus, okay? Yeah. yeah. The middlemen, the distributors, for them it was just another monthly release. Mm -hmm. So when they order the, the amount of copies that they wanted of that SKU, which for them is just a line in an Excel file, yeah. come on, mm -hmm. they totally underestimated the, the reach of the product. Mm -hmm. So that uh, at the end uh, translated into many people were not able to get the box as soon as it arrived because it totally sold out immediately because the, the amount of copies that were uh, ordered were well the expectations, yeah. yeah because they didn't even knew that what was that mm -hmm. so it's a problem it's a problem because uh, we are realizing since the beginning that every time we make a super box with a super thin week with a super promotion that box sells a lot mm -hmm. but the monthly releases are being more and more obscured during these years because they are not the super glamorous product you know yeah and, and then once in a while you do get that lightning strike product that just leaves you scrambling to make more. It's like everybody wants to, to be in the spotlight mm -hmm. because uh, then inside the Infinity communities, the Infinity players, when a Superbox comes out and it's for Pano, the other faction players get jealous. <laughs> okay, because the glamorous <laughs> moment is for Pano right yeah. there. And then the next box comes and it's uh, Nomads. Mm -hmm. And everybody gets yellow of the Nomads. It's, it's like that. I mean, it's super fun to be inside mm -hmm. Infinity. It's super fun to be enjoying the game, the hardcore communities and everything. And, and the memes that they generate. It's super fun to be there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's home for me. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's, the, it's a very positive community because I'm super exposed on the internet. Okay, and my face is, is on the internet. And then they, they make memes with my face, but... <laughs> They're not cruel. They're, yeah, they're yeah. funny. Okay. Uh, I, I, I did have to resist one you put up recently going, oh, caption this. I was just like, no, don't do it. <laughs> well, guys, that uh, 
That is a, a little update mm -hmm. just to whet the appetite for the end of the month. One last thing. One last thing. Can, can I say one oh, last yeah, thing? Oh, yeah, go for okay. it, man. Uh, well, we are we, we right now. We see, we get, we'll, we'll, we'll get you a camera. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Here we go. Let it yeah. go. Woohoo! There it is. The there sexy t shirt. Yeah. So we are here making the content for Defiance. We are so excited about it. Remember, Kickstarter exclusive, Corvus Belli, Metal Miniatures, totally compatible with Infinity. Talking about compatibility with Infinity, there's one certain box that was released previously this year. I'm talking about Operation Wildfire box, okay? Uh, Do we have a picture of the, the Wildfire uh, box? I, yeah, please. I have the, the box content. Let's get it, yeah. Okay, so here we go, boop. So there's there you your go. terrain with your miniatures and mm -hmm. everything you need to get up, running, and ready to play. So the factions that comes in Operation Wildfire Wars, which is a, a battle pack with two balanced forces, are O12 and Sasbasti. Okay, can we have a look at the closer look of the miniatures? We do. Because so there's your combined Sasbastis, army. Sasbastis, okay, mm -hmm. and o over them O12. The bad guys from Defiance are mostly Sasbastis, and other guys that will have a lot of presence in Defiance is O12. Mm. So. Uh, Operation Wildfire is here, Defiance is here, they go together in perfect harmony, okay? The, um, it's, it's a product that if you already have, congratulations, because it fits perfectly with the next big thing that you're going to have, which is obviously Defiance, come on. <laughs> uh, but to celebrate Defiance, to celebrate that it's coming, we are going to give away a copy of Operation Wildfire here at the weekend there, courtesy of Corvus Belli, for you, okay? Happy days. So, guys, mm -hmm. if you want to be in with a chance of winning that, remember all you have to do is to come on over to beastsofwar.com or on tabletop.com, post a comment on this post, and double your chances by putting a comment on the YouTube uh, video. And remember to hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell button to ding our dong, and most importantly of all, share the video with someone who might be interested. Yeah. Because it, yeah, it, helps, it, helps, it helps these guys. Uh, but it also helps us as well, you know, because it's um, it, it's difficult with all of the billions of pieces of content that float around every day now, and everybody just watches all sorts of stuff. Um, it's nice to get a little share because it just helps spread the word of cool stuff that's happening. Mm -hmm. Carlos, thank you for joining us, man. It is always a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, guys, we'll be right back in one second. <laughs> 